Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for October 6th, 2021. Well, yesterday we had a nice little relief rally, but it appears worries are kind of taking over here this morning. And it would appear that yesterday's bounce was nothing more than a dead cat bounce, at least at the moment. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up, and let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Marker Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I truly, truly appreciate it. Well, my goodness, um, those who happened to buy into yesterday's rally thinking that this was the dip to buy are waking up this morning to a very painful reality. You know, one of the things that the market has been training everybody to do is every dip in the market is a reason to rush in and buy. Unfortunately, when we actually turn into a corrective market, that's where those buy the dip buyers get um, tremendously punished for that activity. And we're going to probably see that this morning. Um, as a matter of fact, it could be extremely painful for a lot of folks. And one of the things that I've been mentioning in this market, how important it is to recognize resistance above. Remember, we cannot sound the all clear to the upside in a market when we are in this downtrend until we can pass through that downtrend, hold, prove to hold it as support and actually resume an uptrend. You see, so much of the market is controlled by the institutions. The vast majority, about 82%, of the market is controlled by institutional traders. Now, they have that ability to move overnight and do things overnight to protect themselves, where retail traders, by and large, don't have those same advantages. And in a market like this, um, in, a, in a downtrending market or a correction that we might be in here, um, can really damage a trader's account if you don't recognize the change in the market condition. And honestly, guys, if this were to turn into a full-on bear market, it could literally destroy those accounts if you don't change those habits. So be really, really careful. And yesterday during Right Way Options, I kept cautioning, be careful guys, be careful, be careful about buying. And um, as a matter of fact, what I ended up doing, the only trades that I put on yesterday was some additional bear call credit spreads, which are going to be in profit this morning as a result. So watch these price levels as we push back up um, in the chart. Now is all lost, is everything lost? No, not at all. Um, yes, it's going to be kind of a gloomy morning, potentially, but um, we haven't lost everything yet. So, for example, we still have this price support in here on the chart that could hold. Now, one thing I will tell you is the problem that we do have with this is that we really have that 200-day moving average within striking distance. And I cannot rule out the possibility um, that we test that, and particularly if we get a bad ADP number. I'm not saying we are going to get a bad ADP number, but if we were, that could certainly add some additional pressure to that chart and push us down. One of the things that we've got going on here, we've got the government in hyper mode trying to convince everybody that the debt ceiling is the worst catastrophe that could ever happen. Um, because they will default. Well, honestly, the truth of the matter is, guys, every single day the federal government has money coming in, and that is money from payroll deductions and 401, you know, all those kind of things that come into the market all the time um, or come into the government all the time. What they will have to do is curtail spending, and what it really says is they have to live within the money that they have. So will we see a catastrophe? Maybe. 
But I think what we're doing is we're building a lot of hype into this, and that's creating their own problem here in the market. For example, we are continuing to see bonds rally. TNX, um, the 10-year treasuries are rising, and they rose yesterday in this move, um, increasing that fear here in the market, and they are on the rise um, as well this morning. TYX also saw a substantial rally yesterday, and it is rising this morning. Early morning, it was up another four basis points. So with that kind of hyper um, activity uh, conversation from the government making it sound like oh a meteor is coming it's going to destroy everything uh, the fact of the matter is they can still um, they can not have a debt ceiling and still not default but they're going to have to live within some spending requirements now I'm not suggesting that they shouldn't raise the debt ceiling that's not my point here my point is that um, this hypersensitivity um, on on this spending and, and raising, continuing to raise the debt is creating some of that fear in the market. So that's an issue. We also have the 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 um, extremely strong rally in energy stocks. Um, that's putting impl inflationary pressures on everyone around the world and probably slowing economies a bit as those prices continue to spike in that energy crisis that's starting to show itself here in um, the market. So let's take a look at um, our SPY. Now our SPY has a little bit of trouble here because big tech or tech itself is very, very sensitive to rising bond rates. So notice where the Dow didn't look like it had some room before it possibly failed some price support here in the chart. I want you to notice right in here that we don't have a lot of downside before we fail or make new lows here in that chart. Now, fortunately, we have um, our 200-day moving average is quite a bit lower, and we have a pretty substantial level of price support in the chart here before we reach that 200-day that um, price level in the chart. So if we were to get a real surge of selling, I would suspect we would find some price support levels in here first. Um, I'm not saying we couldn't test the 200-day, but we may catch a little bit of price support in here. Now, if we were to rally back up, remember our, our, our moving averages here are very bearish and we are in a downside trend. So if we do find some reason for the bulls to be inspired, let's just keep in mind that we've got a lot of work here to really get things back into shape. We're gonna have to get through these um, resistance levels, these downtrends, um, and try to push up through here and uh, to show some support. And this morning, that's not looking too favorable, at least at the moment. That could change here in just a few minutes. Let's take a look at the QQQ. Now, QQQ is ultra sensitive to rising bonds, and you can see pretty bearish look at the way the mar um, we could be setting up this morning. Um, if we fail through here, um, I want you to notice that there really isn't much price support um, in this chart below this level. Um, if we were to fail through here, I suspect a pullback into here is possible. That's another hundred and some points lower here in the NASDAQ. Now, there is some good news in that as well. If we were to fall into that level, um, I think we're going to be coming in contact really quickly with that 200-day moving average. And that's where we could catch some of that support. So watch that. If you want some of this pain to be over, a quick move down to the 200 might be where we get um, this painful move over and we can start a little bit of more of a controlled relief rally instead of just uh, you know, rushing in and running for the door, rushing in and running for the door um, seems to be what the market attitude has been here lately. So watch that closely. Now, if we do find that reason for bullishness 
and there is that possibility. We'll talk about that in just a second. There is that reason for possibility. Um, if we find that reason for bullishness and we can hold this price level of support, then you'll want to be watching these resistance levels above. And kind of keep in mind, any rally back to resistance has to be questioned as a possible shorting opportunity right now until we can get back above those downtrends and hold a higher low. Then let's take a look at our IWM. Now IWM has been um, holding up pretty darn well and it's been holding up really well just based on um, um, financials trying to hold and um, energy prices spiking. Now, energy is continuing to show quite a little bit of bullishness um, overall here, but let's just kind of keep in mind that we still have this downtrend going on. And although that's happening, we have this uptrend in here, so we're wedging in this pattern. I can't rule out that possibility in here that we could just bounce around in this area. However, I do have to point out that this morning it's looking like we're going to gap back below that 200 day moving average. Average. And the problem that we have with that is this 50 is drawing near, 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 and that possibility that we get that death cross here in the chart. So if those bears were to win the day here, and if, um, if I can't say that they will, but if they were to win the day here, and we were to drop down below this little trend in here, that could be really technical, technically damaging here in the chart if we lose this little uptrend um, drop down in here, then any rally back, we would assume um, we're probably going to continue following trends to the downside in either. Point. So watch that close. Let's take a look at our VIX here. Now, VIX had a nice little resting pullback yesterday, but unfortunately, it wasn't enough to resolve any problems um, in the chart. Notice we still have that upside trend going on in here, and we are still holding above this downtrend. And we ended the day back above that 20 handle in the chart. And I've been mentioning that 20 level in here. If I, if I were to draw a line just right around that 20 level, notice how we've got lots of price support lots of resistance that was in that chart this is an important level and if we were to hold this level if with fear maybe coming in that's where we could see that major spike um, in um, the VIX and really put some pain on the market so watch that closely and carefully and there is that chance that we could dip back uh, down below that but I would be really really careful um, with the idea that the all clear sounded and it's time to rush back in. Let's take a look at our T2122. Now this is the four week new high, new low ratio. And I've been mentioning this, that this made me a little uncomfortable that we were bouncing so hard yesterday. Even though we have not reached the oversold condition here in this chart. Um, with this reversal today, there is that possibility that we could continue that selling um, in the market and we could reach that oversold condition. So watch that carefully. Um, so that possibility exists. So if those bears can find inspiration to push beyond the lows of the open this morning, then we certainly have plenty of room for downside here in the chart. And then also keep in mind that if the bulls can find inspiration, we have plenty of upside room if they can get that inspiration to move us up. Right now, that's not looking likely, but the possibility does exist. Let's take a look at our T2107. Now, T2107 was giving us some hope here um, that we're starting to see some of these stocks that are well below their 200 day moving average are starting to perk up. Now this is the percentage of stocks above the 200 day moving average and we need to see this growing. We need to see this coming back up, breaking that downtrend. Um, we did have this little higher low in here as you can see and yesterday we kind of held. So there is that possibility that we could break above this resistance level and hold in that chart. That would be bullish for the market if that can occur. So if we can get those bulls inspired, that could be the case. However, with this morning, the way things are looking, we do run that risk, that possibility that we end up 
making a new low here in this chart. So watch carefully for that. Um, T2101. T2101 is our absolute breadth indicator. And notice that our breadth indicator on that rally yesterday just was not all that impressive. Um, so what we need to see, um, we need to see a crescendo in the selling. We need to see that capitulation point. And that's when everybody just throws up their hands. They give up for the, for the time being. The bears really run, um, run hard. And um, then we kind of hit that capitulation. Now, when that uh, capitulation occurs, we will likely see our market breadth spike. Our market breadth will typically spike on a, um, a strong, strong selling wave. So watch carefully for that possibility if that does exist. If those bulls can continue to fight in here and continue to hold these support levels, that may not be the case, but let's watch closely for that possibility. Let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today and what I've been talking about that could, could, give us some inspiration here for the bulls and that would be our ADP number. Now our ADP number is anticipating an increase, an increase in um, private payrolls. Now I personally think, my guess is that's unlikely. But as you can see, consensus is suggesting an increase in private payrolls. Now this is the Econo Day consensus. They may have a different number out in other places, so kind of keep that in mind. But that's the Econo Day consensus. And I am concerned that that may not um, be correct, that we could miss on this number. So watch that carefully. If we happen to come in better than that, we could see the bulls respond really strongly on that. That would give them inspiration to hold, support these price levels. But if they were to miss, I could see a problem right here. And we've already seen this morning with the mortgage applications number, a substantial miss in the mortgage applications number coming in at a minus 6.9% and a refinance um, index dropping by a full 10% as those mortgage um, um, prices are rising. So watch that carefully, guys. We just have that ugly look in the market where it could be could be a rough day. So, um, you know, I hate to always, I hate to bring this kind of information to you because, you know, but don't shoot the, don't shoot the person that's bringing it to you. Hopefully you've protected yourself. Hopefully from these videos, you've been on the right side of this and you have actually made some money in the process. That's what we're doing in right way options right now. So, um, sorry to have to be the bearer of those bad that bad news but these technicals are starting to look problematic again we still could bounce we still could catch that bounce but i really think there is that possibility we test the 200 day first so with that everyone how about we take a look at um, i'm going to skip over earnings today um, there are a few earnings, but nothing in there that's particularly notable today for earnings. I do have a few listed on the blog, so if you want to go back and take a look at those, click that link just below the title of the video and go back to the blog. Now, what I was going to say this morning is I would love to really give you guys a lot of good stock suggestions, but honestly, there's an awful lot of risk here in, in that kind of thing. So what I I'm going to do is I'm going to suggest that you might start looking, if you haven't already, start looking at some of those inverse ETFs. If you want long trades, start looking at those inverse ETFs. These are putting in very bullish patterns where we're rising above the 50-day moving average, holding in here. And I got to tell you, the, the, this is a pattern that we call the rounded bottom breakout. Now, the rounded bottom breakout is when a stock um, um, rises above that 50 and all of those short-term moving averages cross up through. Notice that that 50-day moving average is starting to round up. And then we break out above that price. Now the ultimate target 
in the round and bottom breakout on this, and it never happens in a straight line, is that we may see this 200 day moving average as the upside target. So there are a lot of these inverse ETFs looking this way. We've got um, um, SH, we've got SDA, SD if you want more of a leveraged ETF. We've got uh, TZA if you want a three times leveraged ETF on the Russell. Um, RWM if you don't want that big leverage, just have a, a, um, a 1% move for a 1% down move. Um, RWM would do that. Um, we have like SQQQ that you could look at for um, a short position um in the market or just a hedge um to that market so watch carefully for some of those kind of um, stocks um, that could really help you out psq is one that i currently hold and that's paying off um, right now so watch carefully and then um, other places you might want to look with bonds being a problem here take a look at um whoops tbt Take a look at TBT. TBT continues to rise, and if bonds continue to rise, that could be um, a, a continued problem here for the market. So maybe looking at some of those things. You could also look at um, indexes that have held up pretty well. Let's take, for example, financials. If we look at the XLF, XLF is pulling back kind of hard today. So we have a pattern here of a potential quadruple top high. That's remarkable to see. Usually you don't get that many tests up there. Um, now this could certainly hold, but if you believe this could turn bearish, you know, you could pick up like um, FAZ. FAZ is an inverse on um, those um, financials where you could trade those to the short side with a long instrument. Um, so Hopefully that's helpful, guys. Um, a few ideas for you here today. You could also maybe start looking. These are not buys yet. Um, gold and silver. Um, it, it's remarkable that they're not you know, with the condition of the market and the the uh, the way the debt is. Um, and as a matter of fact, if we really get a heavy sell off, these will probably move down with the market. So. Be really, really careful here today. Uh, protect your capital. Remember, guys, that um, sitting on the sidelines, um, cash is a position. And when a market is like this, if you don't feel like you have an edge, sitting in cash is a, a position that is often underutilized. Protect your capital in markets like this if you don't feel you have an edge in the market. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Everyone take care, be safe, and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. I wish you all the best.